Stop doing this when you enter bills in QuickBooks Online. Hey there, my name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. And I wanna talk about in this video today, uh, something I see people do, these are clients, these are QuickBooks University members, uh, do all the time when they enter bills in QuickBooks. And um, it's, a, it's a mistake. And you wanna make sure you fix this because what can happen if you don't is you can enter a bill twice, end up paying it twice, you're out the cash, then you got a credit with a vendor uh, and maybe try to get that money back. It just becomes a pain, it's a hassle. Okay, so here we are at the home screen. This is a sample company file that you can access yourself. You literally can just Google QuickBooks Online sample company file and uh, it will allow you in here. Also, if you already have a QuickBooks Online account, you can go up uh, to the uh, gear and there is a sample company link that will take you to this exact same file. So I always encourage people, hey, you know, go practice. If you're working on QuickBooks Online, you're learning QuickBooks Online, go practice in this sample company file uh, because uh, that way when you mess things up, it won't mess up your actual company file. Okay, so here we are. Again, we're at the home screen. We're going to go up to new. All right, so we are entering a bill. So we go to vendors, we go to bill and the bill screen comes up here and pretty straightforward. Okay, so you've got your vendor. Okay, so we're gonna choose whoever this is. You know, we'll say Chins Gas and Oil, and it's gonna bring up the mailing address. And if you enter the terms, which I highly encourage you to do, uh, it will put the terms here. So we're gonna just go ahead and put net 30. The bill date, 1-8-2023. This will default to today's date, okay? This is one of the biggest mistakes people make is when they enter their bills into QuickBooks, they put today's date. They just let it default. Now, here's what you want to make sure that you do. You need to put in the bill date that is on the actual bill. Okay, so you'll get a bill and it might say, uh, you know, bill date December 31st and you go to enter it, you get it, let's say electronically, you get it in the mail, whatever it is, on 1-3. Okay, so in 2023, you get the bill. You go to enter it on 1-8, and it defaults to this date, and you leave it that way. Then you put the due date, whatever the due date is, if it's 30 days, 2-7-2023. You need to change this to the actual bill date. And typically, the reason is, is because, you know, let's, let's take a utility bill, for example. You receive this bill, and if you put it in on 1-8 and due date 2-7 on an accrual basis, and I'm not going to get into accrual and cash, but on an accrual basis, it will count this as an expense in January. Now, the thing with a utility, for example, is it relates to the previous month. All right, so now we are putting a December expense in January, and we want to make sure that we put it in the correct time period. So this would be bill date, December 31st, let me change this here and due date 130. Okay, now utility bill, you're going to put in whatever the due date is. It's not always net 30, whatever the due date is. So you want to make sure that you put the correct date in. That is mistake number one that I see people do, and you need to stop doing this. So just look at the bill. It's going to tell you bill date, X date. And I even tell people, hey, if, if you get a bill and it's dated 1-2-23, but it is for the previous month, enter the bill date as 1231. That way in your accounting records, because it's for 1231, if it's for utilities for December, put it in 1231. That way on your accrual basis P&L, it's gonna show a utility expense for December, which is the correct time period. Okay, we got the due date and then the bill number. This is mistake number two. Always, always, always enter the bill number. Now, you're gonna say, hey, what is the bill number? And what do I do when there is no bill number, okay? A bill number is essentially the invoice number. So you get a bill, it's got an invoice number, you're gonna put that in. A lot of bills don't have invoice numbers. Utility bills specifically do not have invoice numbers. So what I tell people is go ahead and put in something like December 2022, okay? And here's the thing, or you can put in 1222. You know, here's the thing is you have to be consistent how you enter these when they don't have an invoice number. Now, here's the reason. So let's say that this does have an invoice number. We'll just say that this is 542147. 
and you enter this and we go in and we put in that this is for utilities let's see if we have utilities here right there and we'll put in 150 dollars okay so we enter this bill and we say save and you know close and we're going to go pay it later whatever the case may be now if for some reason this company chins gas and oil sends you a duplicate bill which happens all the time and you enter it for 150 dollars and you're not putting this in then QuickBooks has no idea that this is the same bill or duplicate bill. And you'll probably forget. You have so much going on in your business, you're going to forget. Okay. So when you enter the bill number or the invoice number, QuickBooks will alert you and say, hey, you've already put one in with this same number. Are you sure you want to enter this? So it alerts you when you have a duplicate. So that's great when you have an invoice number. And again, if you don't, specifically utility bills, they typically don't have an invoice number. Some do. I've seen some that do. You want to put in something that's going to be consistent. So when I say consistent, let's say this is 1222 because it's for December 2022. The next time you enter one, always, always, always use that format. That way, if you enter another one that's 1222, that's a duplicate, it's going to alert you that this is a duplicate bill. Okay. So those are two main things that you want to stop doing uh, or start doing, I should say. Stop doing it the old way by letting this default to today's date and stop not entering the invoice number, regardless if they have an invoice number or not. Those are the main two things. Any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below. Head over to the QuickBooks University. I've got a link down in, in the pinned comment for the master class. I revealed there the, the four-step process to learning QuickBooks quick and easily. So just check it out. Love to have you join us. And I look forward to talking to you soon.